there, my name is Devin Knight. I'm the president of training at Pragmatic Works. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at Power Automate Desktop and how we can use Power Automate Desktop to organize and make our flows more consistent. So if this is the first time you've watched one of our robotic process automation videos, you can check out, I did a getting started with RPA using Power Automate Desktop a while back. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. You can also check out on our website, we have an RPA in a day class that's available for free. So if you're interested in getting much more in depth into this, I certainly recommend taking a peek at that. I'll share a link below in the description on where you can sign up for our RPA in a day class. Now in this video, we're going to be focusing in on one small aspect of Power Automate Desktop known as subflows. And so the purpose of what we're going to be doing with subflows is showing you how you can organize your solutions, make them more consistent, and even make them reusable so that you can have actions that uh, perhaps you can run multiple times with inside of your Power Automate Desktop solutions. So let's go ahead and take a look at my screen here and see what we have started already. Uh, in this solution, I've already built out a Power Automate desktop flow, and there's quite a few actions that are happening with inside of here. Now, imagine if I were to save the solution and I were to leave the company and share it with someone else so that they can take it over from me. They may have to spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out what's going on inside of this. And so, of course, you can do things like add little comments to document your work, so you can add in uh, notations in here to make it a little easier for them to understand what's going on. But also, one of the things that you can do is you can leverage subflows as a way to organize your solutions and make it easier for people to take in bite-sized portions of your work to figure out what's going on. So for example, this flow has a little bit of actions, quite a few actions going on with it. But what I'd like to do is I want to take these actions and organize them into subflow so that again, for the purposes of organization and perhaps even reusability, it'll make it easier to find things. So to do that, to add a subflow, you can go up to the top section of your screen right here and select that you want to add a subflow. So if I select that I want to add a subflow here, I can then hit the little plus sign and that'll add in a new subflow. And with inside this subflow, you can call it whatever you want, but you usually want to name this in a uh, name that will help organize the unit of work that you're doing. So if I'm doing something like uh, adding accounts, by the way, you can't have uh, spaces, I forgot that for a moment, uh, adding accounts and I can hit save, I can then take that new subflow that I've just created, which you can see up top. By the way, every flow is gonna have a main flow. So this is really what you start with as a main flow, but then you could add additional subflows. And then those subflows show up as tabs on the top of your screen here that you can toggle back and forth between. So what I can do is if I wanted to, I can go back to my main flow and I could take a portion of the work that I have here and push that into my subflow. So that way it just makes it a little bit more organized. And then again, it makes it where I can make it reusable and I can execute it multiple times with inside of my main flow. So let's show how this works. I'm gonna take all of the work that we have with inside of this loop. You can see a little loop here, a for each loop. We'll talk about that in another video. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. So we're gonna cut and we're gonna pull all of that out of the loop. And then we're gonna go over to our adding account subflow here and we're just gonna paste it back in. So you can do control V here, boom, it pastes it all back in for us. So control V worked there just perfectly for us. So I can see all of these items have now been added into our subflow, but I don't have any reference to this subflow within my main flow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually execute our subflow in between our loop. So in between our loop, we're gonna have that subflow executed in each iteration. It's gonna run that subflow multiple times for us. And I could have that same subflow referenced multiple times with inside of my desktop flow. So I could use and leverage it and execute it more than once if I needed to. But we're gonna go ahead and go up to the action section here and we'll search for subflow. And we can tell it that we wanna run a subflow by dragging and dropping that into the loop that I have inside my for each loop. And then we can tell it which subflow we wanna run. Now in this case, we only have one, but if you had multiple subflows, you'd see them all listed here and you can select the one that you wanna execute. So we're gonna go ahead and select our adding account subflow, and then we'll hit save. So you'll see that subflow execution occurring within inside of our loop. Again, I could have multiple executions of that subflow throughout my main flow, and you can kind of determine how many times and where it makes sense to run it. When you're happy with that, you can go ahead and save. And then if I run this, 
it's gonna read in from my Excel sheet and allow me to iterate over each one of the records that I have. So let's go ahead and run it. Again, not super critical, you know everything that's happening within the flow itself. It's more the subflow that we're discussing in this video. So if I hit run, it's going to launch my solution and it's gonna enter in some information multiple times. So you can actually see in the background, it's executing my subflow. It's adding in some new accounts for me here. You can see it's pulling from an Excel sheet I have and it's adding these accounts. And then it's gonna run through and iterate over it multiple times. Now it's actually adding another account. It's gonna go execute my subflow again. And it's gonna do this multiple times until all of my account information is entered in. Now this is, uh, the app that you're seeing is a Contoso invoicing app that actually comes with the RPA in a day class files, the robotic process automation in a day class files. So if you're interested in learning more about Power Automate Desktop, again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a free class that will actually walk you through, not necessarily this uh, particular example, but it will show you how to use that Contoso invoicing application and leverage it for uh, a, a learning experience within Power Automate Desktop. So as you can see, it looks like my solution has completed. My subflow ran multiple times. I believe it ran three different times during that process. And it was able to make it so I can compartmentalize that code and run it multiple times. And I could even add in another run subflow in another area of this main flow if I wanted to. So that's really it for this example. This was just a quick demonstration and explanation of what subflows are. Remember, every one of your desktop flows is going to have a main portion, but then you could add in subflows. And again, the purpose of adding in those subflows is it allows you to compartmentalize your code so you can make it reusable. And it also makes it more maintainable and easy to read so you can pass it on to someone else and they can more easily understand what you've provided to them. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Again, check out our RPA in a day class that's recorded that we partnered with Microsoft to record and you can find it free on our site. Thank you so much and enjoy learning and playing around with Power Automate Desktop. Thanks.